England completed a 2-0 series win over Sri Lanka after rain sogged off the Lord's Test. Sri Lankan captain Angelo Matthews said the series has been a massive learning curve for Sri Lanka. Unfortunately, it did seem that curve was in the shape of a bobsled run and Sri Lanka learnt it by being shoved down it on a kitchen tray at high speed. I think it's fair to say that the schedulers did throw the Sri Lankan team something of a learning curveball in baseball parlance and they swung and missed big time. But uh, they are cranking up nicely now showing uh, some signs of form a month or so into the tour starting to adapt and learn about English conditions and should be peaking just at the right time for the test series which has now finished. England are 10 points to two up in the points based cricket triathlon system that has caught the public imagination in an enormous way here I cannot emphasize how often people stop me in the street to talk about England's 10-2 lead. It's, uh, Andy, what's the point score in It's 10-2, it's Jared. 10-2. 10-2. We're very excited about it here. Uh, but I don't object to this as a format in itself, but it doesn't make a great deal of sense to put the heaviest weighted matches at the start. There's a reason that Shakespeare put the sword fight scene of Hamlet at the end. As we speak, the West Indies, Australia, South Africa tri-series is in full swing. Very interesting how they've done the qualification for this tournament. Uh, it turns out you have to have beaten England in a test series before the Second World War. That is the only way into the tri-series, so those qualification games quite a long time ago now, and maybe that's showing in the slightly erratic form of all the teams involved. It appears to be some kind of cricket, scissors, paper, stone, everyone beating each other. That might be the next move for cricket after they're trying to trim T20 down, get rid of the uh, rather tedious crickety bits of cricket. I'll, uh, I'll think about that more and get back to you. Indian Test Match Schedule news now, and India have come up with a novel way of addressing their ongoing problem in playing really, really badly in away test matches by scheduling 13 home test matches for the forthcoming Indian season. A BCCI spokesman said, we hope that by the end of the 13 test marathon, our players will be so utterly bored of playing home tests that the sheer novelty of playing away from home will inspire them to great heights of achievement. Uh, the venues for the uh, tests include basically every city, town and village in India and one of the tests has in fact been scheduled for a place that doesn't yet exist. Uh, the BCCI have said uh, we've made up a city called CK Nayudarabad. It does not exist yet and we don't know where it will be when it does but we hope that the lure of test cricket will mean that uh, come next February it will have a 50,000 seat cricket stadium and a population of 1.5 million. So interesting times ahead. Beep, beep, beep. That's a noise we don't hear in cricket, we do hear in tennis when there is a fault that is served. But in, in, in cricket, you can no ball and we have a man sort of looking back from a distance, kind of between someone's legs, trying to work out if something, not even side on, trying to work out if a no ball has been called. If only there was some kind of technical system, beep, that, that, that someone could do, that could come up and could tell us if every ball was a no ball. But instead, Andy, we have what? Well, human error. We have human error. Uh, you know, that's it's part of the game, that's what people say. Well, the human error, that's the player's business. That's, that's why they're there. That is why Angelo Matthews captains. <laughs> it, uh, it doesn't entirely make sense. I mean, there's a number of ways of judging no balls. Clearly we had, you know, the controversy in this series been others in other series. Oddly, this normally it's umpires not bothering to call them. In this case, it was the rare occasion of them actually calling it and, uh, and, Still and, making mistakes. and getting it wrong. Um, a number of ways. Firstly, most obviously, you have a third umpire in a special retractable pod with his eyes, uh, you know, just level with the uh, the bowling crease so he can, uh, uh, you know, pop up and then as soon as the ball's bowled, he sinks back down into the turf. I mean, that's, no one's, no one's suggested that yet. No. Uh, alternatively, you could just have the third umpire doing it on his special screen and calling a no ball afterwards. 
What I haven't heard suggested is, why does the no-ball have to be called as the bowler bowls it? Because with a front foot no-ball, it doesn't even give you the free hit like the old back foot no-ball call might have done. Why does the umpire not just keep it under his hat and like a wide until after the event and then call no-ball? And then if he's not sure about it, he can check it. And then you don't have this ludicrous situation whereby uh, you know, Pradeep was denied his place in eternal history as the only man ever to bowl out as it hit the stumps of numbers two, three, four, and five in a single test innings because of an understandable but still irritating mistake. Won't someone think of the stats? Two-tier test cricket, which is harder to say than I was hoping it would be coming in, um, essentially is, is an idea where we could have seven teams in the first division, five in the second, they could swap around and play a little bit, and it would help test cricket, we would get more teams, hopefully there would be more competitive, there would, uh, there would be an actual reason for some series to exist, and you know, beyond that, if there was a collective, collective bargaining agreement, we could have a sport where we could make sure that everyone made money, not just the teams at the top. And then we could have cricket.tv, which would be a series where you could just like pay for it and watch everything in the world, like, like streamed into your eyeballs, which I'm sure you're very excited about. Directly into the eyeballs. Directly into your eyeballs. Sign me up. Yeah. I've, I've already got cricket.tv hashtag, hashtag, hashtag tattooed across my back. My concern with it, Jared, apart from the fact that seven and five are awkward numbers to do a, a league out of, is the, the effect it might have on countries that find themselves in the second division that are already struggling, Zimbabwe, West Indies, um, you know, Sri Lanka even, would that have the effect of helping them rebuild or would it just put another nail in their head stroke coffin. That's not your real worry though, is it? Your real worry is about the stats. The stats Let's be honest, stats, you're lying two, about that. Two, two division stats, once somebody think of the stats, we see, it, we see it in county cricket. We've had two divisions in county cricket for how long? What? Yes. 15 years? And still, on most cricketing websites, including some quite, quite close to here, it's kind of hard to tell which division is which. We, well, cricket doesn't like this kind of thing, Jared. It's, it's a sign of the end of times. There's been a lot of talk about Johnny Bairstow's wicket keeping, and that's because his recent drop rate has been basically K. Akmal level. And if you're dropping on a similar level to Cameron Akmal, you know, th there's obviously already problems. If you take away 32.5 runs for every one of his drops, um, essentially he's averaging about 50 in test cricket at the moment, which is really good if he can continue to bat averaging about 80 or 90. Yes, uh, which, yeah, I mean, he it's an awkward one for England, isn't it? That it's that's been a that, lot of awkward ones for best, though. It's been, yeah, it's been, this has been an awkward issue pretty much since, uh, I believe it was Percy Sherwell scored the first 100 by a wicketkeeper in about 1906 for South Africa. Since then, we've wanted everything from our keepers. It's, uh, it's awkward, it's so hard to quantify wicketkeeping, isn't it? I mean, are, are there adequate metrics for it yet, Jared? Uh, no. No. So, I mean... Uh, so we're, where did you get this 32.5? That, that is the average runs that a test bat, batsman makes from 1 to 11. Right. Every, every oh, player okay. basically makes 32.5. So, because it's not fair, if Bairstow just keeps dropping number uh, uh, no, opening batsmen and go on to make hundreds, that's not his fault compared to another wicketkeeper who might be just as ordinary but keeps dropping <laughs> number 11s. Yeah. So realistically, when it comes down to it, if you take 32.5 runs off every time, Johnny Bairstow has to make a lot of runs. What? He has to make all the runs, then. <laughs> Well, he is doing that quite well at the moment. At the moment, it's fine. If yeah. he keeps batting as the way he has in the last seven matches, he can continue to keep dropping as many chances as he has in the last seven matches. Hmm. This one is going to run and run. And drop. <laughs> 